can hear you well. Okay. So, my general impression so far in the group meeting today, we started off with Nico. He had this great idea. I'm going to wake up every morning with a, this is going to be the des best day of my life. And I go with that program and we see uh, if we can. Uh, Gypsy brought out her book and said, our thoughts create our destiny. So if we have these positive thoughts, we will uh, bring joy and happiness into our life, and this will be a wonderful way to uh, deliver it. Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, Bjorn. Bjorn, and he held up a book and said that there are 112 different little techniques that immediately we can uh, know who Shiva is, and this is um, what's recommended because when you know who Shiva is, there's a big benefit to that. So here's the 112 techniques, and they're very simple experiment, and you'll see for yourself. Of course, CC sees happiness being in front of a big stage with thousands of infinite people and her sharing something that makes those people happy then she's fulfilled and happy in her life silence ah uh, at least let's stop all the bullshit with this silence that feels good then of course we had an interesting thing that was a little more complicated about the surrendering and being content with what it is, and but having hope for the future, and uh, and uh, feeling that God is taking care of it, and so having faith in Him, and uh, all of that. So, my general impression is is that all of these strategies and things probably, um, at best, they're not very useful is my take on it. I mean, yeah, you can have a positive uh, attitude and wake up, but shit, some guy's going to rob your camera and all of a sudden you're at the police station or something like that. And your positive thoughts, positive thoughts, and all of a sudden the doctor says, hey, we see something on the MRI. What the fuck is that about? The techniques that you've been practicing for 30 years now, they may, you may feel that they've been of some benefit to you, but you're still in uh, duality here and uh, dealing with whatever you have to deal with, maybe in a positive way. So my general thing is, is that as long as you're alive in this world, what the Hindus call samsara, as long as we're here and we think we have this body and we're doing this shit, there's no solution. Forget it. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> the only solution is you get sick, you die. That's, that'll put an end to it. Until then, figuring out how to get out of it, what to do, what mental thing to do. We're wired for fear and desire and competition. A millions of years of evolution, we're fucked. <laughs> so, my, I'm just thinking that um, there is a, an ancient thing in, in, in India that was said uh, about 2,000 years ago, which was uh, more 3,000 years ago, about 800 BC. It says, where one sees another, hears another, knows another, that is alpa. Alpa means little, small. Where there is alpa, there is death. Where one doesn't see another, hear another, know another, that's bhuma. That's bhuma means that's the infinite. Your silence. So the idea is, as long as we're in duality, anything you do, any technique you practice, any strategy you come up with in the morning, it's still, you know, um, it's not going to be the solution. 
That's my just general the the recommendation to surrender, to continuously surrender every day. It'll be just another type of thing that uh, you got to do. There's a lot of faith involved in it, so if you have a thinking mind, eventually you'll doubt that faith. It will be natural that doubts come up, but you. Yeah. So, um, just as a general impression of all of the strategies, I'm thinking that they're not going to work because as long as you're in duality, you fuck. That's my general impression. <laughs> but what I mean by fuck is can that... You, can you de define duality for us? To yes. To help us? That I'm sitting here, you're over there, there's time, there's space, there's a world out here. I was born, I exist from here to here. I'm getting old, I'm getting sick, and I'm going to die. That's duality. That's what everyone believes. Oh, yeah. You're leaving in a few days, you're going back there, I live over there, Bjorn's uh, dual. It's all in duality, right? So, as long as there's duality, I think that there's no solution. So you mean there's no hope? Well, well, I, mean, I just want to say the strategies that I've heard of mm -hmm. waking up in the morning with a positive attitude oh, yeah, yeah. or reading mm -hmm. the book about the, or these techniques of catching in between the out-breath, mm -hmm. the in-breath, that moment, ah, that's it. So recognizing that as a strategy, another in-duality. You'll do it for a while, you'll get tired. In the meantime, your mind, you'll be a beautiful girl there, you forget the whole thing. So that's pretty much... Can you explain like the dream concept we were talking about and how that relates to... Because I don't fully understand this yet. So you were talking about, I'm in your dream or you're in my dream. What does that mean with duality? See, it's a whole... Others, yeah, that complicates everything, point, your question, yeah, my God, I mean, I'm only trying to follow I I that We're all here trying yeah, yeah. to share solutions about, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the, all the solutions to me look like no solution. And that when we walk out of here, we walk out like we walked in of somebody, all of these, because this identification with this body is so thick and so strong, and once I'm this body, then that's it. I have to get old and die. That if it was born, it has to die, right? So there's no way out except to the grave. So none of the solutions are really, they're just kind of band-aids to, to something that you really can't solve. They're not necessarily yeah, but solutions, is, though. But it is, about, right. yeah. it is, yeah. but yeah. It is about moment to moment, being present in the in the no, in this particular moment chair. and it's no, 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 good no. to have a solution no. for each yes. moment for in my book i mean what you say it sounds to me like wait until you're dead then you're going to be enlightened and you're going to no, be no, up no, in bardo no. no what, what do I'm you saying mean is that is you if you if you are if i say who are you cc who are you Oh, I'm uh, this. This is what I do. I have uh, these friends. I've uh, I, this is so. And now I was younger, and now I'm getting a little older. And I assume eventually some disease is going to get me, and uh, that'll be it. Uh, well, but then what should we do? We just uh, wait like this? Or no, no. What I'm uh, what, in other words, suppose people say you want to have a happy life, have some friends, um, do things that you try to enjoy that give you some happiness. And okay, so that's some happiness. Mm -hmm. But that's everybody everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really solve the, the, the real problem because the real problem is, is that we all suffer and mm -hmm. we want to put an end to suffering. Life is suffering. You know the Four Noble Truths. Mm -hmm. There's suffering, there's a cause of suffering, there's an end to suffering, and there's a cause to the end of suffering. So we don't know what the thing is. If your advice is, this is how we'll put an end to suffering. Wake up every morning, it's going to be the best day of my life. Yes. That's it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Thank but and, and I'm not suffering. I, I, I'm very, very happy. I, like, I, I have moments when I cry of gratitude because I'm so happy. My, yes. my life is so rich. 
I, I am allowed to do everything that I ever dreamt of. Oh, yes. Things are happening that I've worked for for many years. Yes. And I have friends and I have fun and so yeah. I don't suffer at all. Because I have solved a lot of little problems on my way yes. with a lot of techniques. Ah. The tricks and techniques, uh -huh. and, and it's made your life happier, more very fulfilled, happy. un understood. Yeah. There's a verse in the Gita that says, "All of these happinesses that we get in life, they all have a beginning. Suppose you have sex. Yeah, it's great, and so that had a beginning. Mm -hmm. But it says all of those beginnings are dukkha yoni." They have the, the yoni, they're the source of dukkha. Why does every happiness in this life have tinged with it? Mm -hmm. It's because it comes to an end. Mm -hmm. But that's good. I wouldn't want to have sex all my life continuously, 24 no, no, hours a day. No, no, I, I give that as an example, as one of the happiest things that we have here. Yeah. Sex, food. So, but they have a beginning and an end. It's okay. So, well... That's the defect of it, because everybody, I think, wants unending happiness. Mm. Mm. No? No, I'd be bored yeah, okay. to death. Fuck no, that. no, yeah. no, it's okay. It's okay. No, I, I think it's that. That. <laughs> when one thing, like when one thing goes it's down, it's another it's thing it's comes up. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. When, when, you know, when, like yeah. Yeah. at so first you think you're is, happy when you have... Yeah. 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 The word joy is actually a comparative term. So, uh. so you're right, and Nico's right. Because joy, it's from sadness that you will have greater joy. If you have continuous joy, it will become like a drug. You need more to sadness, it. more joy. See, that's not the happiness I'm talking about. Mm. See, I didn't want to get into the philosophy. <laughs> no, but that's yeah, interesting uh, because uh, you're the only one who is no, like okay. questioning uh, 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 this whole search. So, okay. then l let me just say that the happiness that we're looking for in sex, in food, in friends, in outside, all of those things, they, um, they come, our senses come in contact with the sense objects and they bring us happiness, that type of thing. Because of that, it has to come to an end. Well, but so what? Well, people say, okay, well, yeah. I'll take some happiness yeah. if mm -hmm. I get, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Because that's, that's all that we can get. Yeah. We try to avoid mm -hmm. unhappiness as much as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we can't totally avoid it because no, we no. stub our toe on the thing where the mm -hmm. guy said, fuck you, and you got upset. So we can't totally avoid And all the things that we like, that we try to get, we never really get them totally. Or if we get it, mm -hmm. we lose interest in it. But something else we're off to. So, is there some happiness that doesn't have any beginning or end? That's the thing, because if that's what we're looking for, I want to be happy, and I want to be happy forever. I want infinite happiness. Is there such a thing? So, of course, in uh, India, there is uh, an idea that that happiness that you're looking for mm -hmm. is who you really are. Mm -hmm. It's your very nature. Yes. You are eternal happiness. Mm. That idea... Mm. That my happiness is not caused because of yeah. ice cream or sex mm. or yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. It's not dependent on anything. It's my very nature. Yes. That's so to recognize that it has nothing to do with how I think, any strategy, any technique. I am bliss. I've always been bliss. Mm. I am bliss now. Yeah. There's never any time when I won't be bliss. But it has to be understood even more deeply. It's not that you're a person who's in bliss. That nature that you are that is bliss is not in time or space. Mm -hmm. The lady said about the witness, how we witness this whole thing. Well, that witness is the bliss. So that witness is the witness of time and space and all duality. So it's not in time or space. So bliss doesn't have a beginning and an end. It's immortal, eternal bliss. That's your very nature. So this strategy of just recognizing that, 
But in duality, anything you do, any strategy, any technique, any effort you make is already kind of a, a problem and it really won't solve it. It won't solve it. After you get off the stage, you got to come back down and uh, deal with the rest of the bullshit. You know. But but what so you say is to find your, your true nature, um, that resonates very much with me because I think when you find the thing that is totally you, your archetype, your nature, your, your calling, your, the reason for your reincarnation. There is a reason why you are here, why we are here. And I think when we go on a search, we find out that reason and then we are able to fulfill a very important part in this whole life on this planet. We are part of a big plan. That's, that's how I feel it sometimes. Mm. And it's not my own bliss or my own happiness, it's to fulfill Other my people's. part. And when I do this, bliss is automatic and mm. it is the true nature mm. of it all. Mm. If, it, if we come together and, and everybody does his thing and nobody is exploited or uh. being used or being pushed into something, we can all be happy and of course we have our ups and downs, but the true uh. nature behind is, uh. is bliss. Well. If I may, I just wanted to say, I understand what you're saying, but there's, a, I think, a more profound and subtle way of understanding this business, which is that that bliss, which is your eternal nature, is in fact the only reality. There's no bunch of people here. You don't have to make anybody happy. Nope. In the Upanishads it says like this, where there is duality as it were, then one sees another, one hears another, one knows another. But when to him all has become the self alone, that blissful self, but when to him all has become that self alone, what will he see and with what? What will he hear? And with what? What will he know? When you understand this truth that my bliss is the only reality, mm -hmm. that's all that ever was, there's no duality. It was me that appeared as CC and Gypsy and time and space. I am Shiva. I am that eternal unchanging consciousness that appears as this whole universe of duality. To realize that is maybe a way to get out of the samsara of that I was born, I'm mm -hmm. getting old, mm -hmm. I'm going to die, I'm waking up this morning and I got this strategy, today's going to be the best day mm -hmm. of my life, or I'm going to have positive thoughts, or I'm going to surrender to some god, or I'm going to forget the whole thing, all of those strategies are not going to be sufficient. I have one last very important question. Yeah. When you die, you meet your 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 you meet soulmates <laughs> after death. Who are they? What I'm trying to say <laughs> is that that you were never born and you're never going to die. There are no soulmates. You're the only reality. You know, in Sanskrit, there's a very famous little sentence, three words: tat, tvam, asi. Mm -hmm. You are that. You, who you really are, are that non-dual reality, that ekam advityam, one without a second. There's one reality which is without a second. It's infinite bliss. You are that. Tatvamasi. You don't have to become that. You don't need any technique to do that. It has nothing to do with your attitude when you wake up in the morning. You never woke up because you're always awake. You are the eternal consciousness which never sleeps, which is always present, which is never hidden, which is always shining. Tatvamasi. You are that. If you realize that, that puts an end to the dream that I was born, I'm getting old, that there's other people here and I should help them. And, all of this. So anyway, of course, it's a very uh, 
esoteric type of teaching. It's nihilistic. It's and it seems like world denying and, uh, and it claims many, to be God too. Many people. You are God. The, of course, that's it's exactly that it's, the sentence that's that the claim. You, you are God. That that one God, which is the supreme infinite bliss, that's your true nature. That's in India. The ancient Upanishadic teaching is that. You are that. Mm. Then when the teacher says that, the student, if he's ripe enough, at the very moment that he hears that sentence, he realizes, Aham Brahmasmi, I am that Brahman. Mm -hmm. Then it's over. Because once you're Brahman, and you've realized that, not because some guru said it or some mm -hmm. book uh, said but because you, in your own experience, ah, <coughs> you see it as clearly as the palm, as a fruit on the palm of your hand. Ah, I am that. I was never born. That's the only reality. In the Gita, there's a verse that says, Na sato vidyate bhavaha, na bhavo vidyate sataha. For the unreal, there is no existence. But for the real, there's no non-existence. Mm -hmm. That witnessing consciousness inside of you never goes out of existence. It witnesses the whole waking state. It witnesses your whole dream state with all the people, the dream time, the dream space, the waking time. That witnessing consciousness never changes. That's the reality. That witnessing consciousness is bliss. Why is it bliss? It's not bliss like when you eat ice cream or have sex. It's the bliss of non-duality. If you think of how you were in deep sleep, when there was no world, no friends, no, no ego, no body, that bliss that's not caused by anything, it's your very nature, how you were in deep sleep, that's how you are right now. Never changes. You don't wake up, go to sleep. You're eternally awake. That's the nature. When I smoke good marijuana, you I get You can understand it. that 100%. <laughs> this guy's been talking about sex. I gotta go home. I'm getting bored. <laughs>